Welcome to official DVSA, Driving Theory Test, 2022 Updated, UK. Question 1. Why should you never wave people across at pedestrian crossings? Give one answer. A. Another vehicle may be coming. B. It's safer for you to carry on. C. They may not be looking. D. They may not be ready to cross. The correct answer is A. Another vehicle may be coming. Explanation, if people are waiting to use a pedestrian crossing, slow down and be prepared to stop. Don't wave them across the road, because another driver may not have seen them, may not have seen your signal, and may not be able to stop safely. Question 2. What's the purpose of road humps, chicanes and narrowings? Give one answer. A. To allow pedestrians to cross. B. To increase traffic speed. C. To reduce traffic speed. D. To separate lanes of traffic. The correct answer is C. To reduce traffic speed. Explanation. Traffic calming measures help to keep vehicle speeds low in congested areas where there are pedestrians and children. A pedestrian is much more likely to survive a collision with a vehicle traveling at 20 miles per hour than they are with a vehicle traveling at 40 miles per hour. Question 3. What requires extra care when you're driving or riding in windy conditions? Give one answer. A. Moving off on a hill. B. Passing pedal cyclists. C. Turning into a narrow road. D. Using the brakes. The correct answer is B. Passing pedal cyclists. Explanation, always give cyclists plenty of room when overtaking them. You need to give them even more room when it's windy. A sudden gust could easily blow them off course and into your path. Question 4. How would age affect an older person's driving ability? Give one answer. A. They won't be able to obtain car insurance. B. They won't signal at junctions. C. They'll need glasses to read road signs. D. They'll take longer to react to hazards. The correct answer is D. They'll take longer to react to hazards. Explanation, as people age, their reaction time gets slower. The rate of decline varies from person to person but you can expect them to take longer to react to a hazard and they may be hesitant in some situations, for example, at a junction. Question 5. Which sign means that there may be people walking along the road? Give one answer. A. B. C. D. The correct answer is D. Explanation, always check the road signs. Triangular signs are warning signs, they inform you about hazards ahead and help you to anticipate any problems. There are a number of different signs showing pedestrians. Learn the meaning of each one. Question 6. You're waiting to come out of a side road. Why should you look carefully for motorcycles? Give one answer. A. Motorcycles are usually faster than cars. B. Motorcycles can easily be hidden behind obstructions. C. Motorcycles have right of way. D. Police patrols often use motorcycles. The correct answer is B. Motorcycles can easily be hidden behind obstructions. Explanation. If you're waiting to emerge from a side road, look carefully for motorcycles, they can be difficult to see. Be especially careful if there are parked vehicles or other obstructions restricting your view. Question 7. What does this sign mean? Give one answer. A. Give way to buses. B. Give way to trams. C. 
Route for buses. D. Route for trams. The correct answer is D. Route for trams. Explanation, take extra care when you encounter trams. Look out for road markings and signs that alert you to them. Modern trams are very quiet and you may not hear them approaching. Question 8. What does this sign mean? Give one answer. A. Multi-exit roundabout. B. Place of historical interest. C. Risk of ice. D. Six roads converge. The correct answer is C. Risk of ice. Explanation, it will take up to 10 times longer to stop when it's icy. Where there's a risk of icy conditions, you need to be aware of this and take extra care. If you think the road may be icy, don't brake or steer harshly, as your tires could lose their grip on the road. Question 9. What does this sign mean? Give one answer. A. Give way to farm vehicles. B. Give way to trams. C. Wait at the barriers. D. Wait at the crossroads. The correct answer is B. Give way to trams. Explanation, obey the give way signs. Trams are unable to steer around you if you misjudge when it's safe to enter the junction. Question 10. What does a red traffic light mean? Give one answer. A. Proceed with care. B. Stop, if you're able to brake safely. C. You must stop and wait behind the stop line. D. You should stop unless turning left. The correct answer is C. You must stop and wait behind the stop line. Explanation, whatever light is showing, you should know which light is going to appear next and be able to take appropriate action. For example, when amber is showing on its own, you'll know that red will appear next. This should give you ample time to anticipate and respond safely. Question 11. What's the purpose of a catalytic converter? Give one answer. A. To reduce engine wear. B. To reduce fuel consumption. C. To reduce harmful exhaust gases. D. To reduce the risk of fire. The correct answer is C. To reduce harmful exhaust gases. Explanation. Catalytic converters reduce a large percentage of harmful exhaust emissions. They work more efficiently when the engine has reached its normal working temperature. Question 12. What color are the reflective studs along the left-hand edge of the motorway? Give one answer. A. Amber. B. Green. C. Red. D. White. The correct answer is C, red. Explanation, reflective studs are used to help you in poor visibility. Different colors are used so that you'll know which lane you're in. These are red on the left-hand edge of the carriageway, white between lanes amber on the right-hand edge of the carriageway, green between the carriageway and slip roads. Question 13. What must you do when you're overtaking a car at night? Give one answer. A. Flash your headlights before overtaking. B. Make sure you don't dazzle other road users. C. Select a higher gear. D. Switch your headlights to main beam before overtaking. The correct answer is B. Make sure you don't dazzle other road users. Explanation. To prevent your headlights from dazzling the driver of the car in front, wait until you pass them before switching to main beam. Question 14. You've just gone through flood water. What should you do to make sure your brakes are working properly? Give one answer. A. Accelerate and keep to a high speed for a short time. B. Avoid using the brakes at all for a few miles. 
C. Go slowly while gently applying the brakes. D. Stop for at least an hour to allow them time to dry. The correct answer is C. Go slowly while gently applying the brakes. Explanation, water on the brakes will act as a lubricant, causing them to work less efficiently. Using the brakes lightly as you go along will quickly dry them out. Question 15. When should you flash your headlights at other road users? Give one answer. A. When letting them know that you're there. B. When showing that you're about to turn. C. When showing that you're giving way. D. When telling them that you have right of way. The correct answer is A. When letting them know that you're there. Explanation, you should only flash your headlights to warn others of your presence. Don't use them to greet others, show impatience, or give priority to other road users, because they could misunderstand your signal. Question 16. You're following a slower moving vehicle. What should you do if there's a junction just ahead on the right? Give one answer. A. Accelerate quickly to overtake before reaching the junction. B. Only consider overtaking when you're past the junction. C. Overtake after checking your mirrors and signaling. D. Slow down and prepare to overtake on the left. The correct answer is B. Only consider overtaking when you're past the junction. Explanation, you should never overtake as you approach a junction. If a vehicle emerged from the junction while you were overtaking, a dangerous situation could develop very quickly. Question 17. What does this sign mean? Give one answer. A. Key side or river bank. B. Road liable to flooding. C. Steep hill downwards. D. Uneven road surface. The correct answer is A, key side or river bank. Explanation, you should be careful in these locations, as the road surface is likely to be wet and slippery. There may be a steep drop to the water, and there may not be a barrier along the edge of the road. Question 18. You're parked on the road at night. When must you use parking lights? Give one answer. A. When the speed limit exceeds 30 miles per hour. B. When there are continuous white lines in the middle of the road. C. When you're facing oncoming traffic. D. When you're near a bus stop. The correct answer is A. When the speed limit exceeds 30 miles per hour. Explanation. When parking at night park in the direction of the traffic. This will enable other road users to see the reflectors on the rear of your vehicle. Use your parking lights if the speed limit is over 30 miles per hour. Question 19. What should you do when you're approaching roadworks on a motorway? Give one answer. A. Always use the hard shoulder. B. Obey the speed limit. C. Speed up to clear the area quickly. D. Stay very close to the vehicle in front. The correct answer is B. Obey the speed limit. Explanation. Be aware of reduced speed limits at roadworks. Speed limits shown inside a red circle are mandatory and cameras are often used to enforce the reduced limit. Slow down in good time and keep your distance from the vehicle in front. Question 20. What should you do if the left-hand pavement is closed due to street repairs? Give one answer. A. Position close to the left-hand curb. B. Speed up to get past the roadworks more quickly. C. Use your right-hand mirror more often. D. Watch out for pedestrians walking in the road. The correct answer is D. Watch out for pedestrians walking in the road. Explanation, where street repairs have closed off pavements, proceed carefully and slowly, 
as pedestrians might have to walk in the road. Question 21. What should you do immediately after joining a motorway? Give one answer. A. Position your vehicle in the center lane. B. Readjust your mirrors. C. Stay in the left-hand lane. D. Try to overtake. The correct answer is C. Stay in the left-hand lane. Explanation. When you've just joined a motorway, stay in the left-hand lane long enough to get used to the higher speeds of motorway traffic before considering overtaking. Question 22. Which sign shows that you're entering a one-way system? Give one answer. A. B. C. D. The correct answer is B. Explanation. If the road has two lanes, you can use either lane and overtake on either side. Use the lane that's more convenient for your destination unless signs or road markings indicate otherwise. Question 23. What does this sign mean? Give one answer. A. Contraflow bus and cycle lane. B. No buses and cycles allowed. C. No waiting for buses and cycles. D. With flow bus and cycle lane. The correct answer is D. With flow bus and cycle lane. Explanation. Buses and cycles can travel in this lane. In this example, they'll flow in the same direction as other traffic. If it's busy, they may be passing you on the left, so watch out for them. Times on the sign will show the lane's hours of operation, if no times are shown, or there's no sign at all, this means the lane is in operation 24 hours a day. In some areas, other vehicles, such as taxis and motorcycles, are allowed to use bus lanes. The sign will show if this is the case. Question 24. What should you do if you see a large box fall from a lorry onto the motorway? Give one answer. A. Catch up with the lorry and try to get the driver's attention. B. Go to the next emergency telephone and report the hazard. C. Pull over to the hard shoulder, then remove the box. D. Stop close to the box until the police arrive. The correct answer is B. Go to the next emergency telephone and report the hazard. Explanation. Lorry drivers can be unaware of objects falling from their vehicles. If you see something fall onto a motorway, look to see if the driver pulls over. If they don't stop, don't attempt to retrieve the object yourself. Pull onto the hard shoulder near an emergency telephone and report the hazard. Question 25. You're about to overtake a cyclist. Why should you leave them as much room as you would give to a car? Give one answer. A. The cyclist might be unsettled if you pass too near them. B. The cyclist might get off their bicycle. C. The cyclist might have to make a left turn. D. The cyclist might speed up. The correct answer is A. The cyclist might be unsettled if you pass too near them. Explanation, before overtaking, assess the situation. Look well ahead to see whether the cyclist will need to change direction. Be especially aware of a cyclist approaching parked vehicles, as they'll need to alter course. Don't pass too closely or cut in sharply as this could unsettle the rider. Question 26. You're the first person to arrive at an incident where people are badly injured. You've switched on your hazard warning lights and checked all engines are stopped. What else should you do? Give one answer. A. Make sure that an ambulance has been called. B. Move the people who are injured clear of their vehicles. C. Stop other cars and ask the drivers for help. D. Try and get people who are injured to drink something. The correct answer is A, make sure that an ambulance has been called.
Explanation, if you're the first to arrive at a crash scene, the first concerns are the risk of further collision and fire. Ensuring that vehicle engines are switched off will reduce the risk of fire. Use hazard warning lights so that other traffic knows there's a need for caution. Make sure the emergency services are contacted, don't assume it's already been done. Question 27. Which document may the police ask you to produce after you've been involved in a collision? Give one answer. A. Your driving license. B. Your theory test certificate. C. Your vehicle registration document. D. Your vehicle service record. The correct answer is A. Your driving license. Explanation, you must stop if you've been involved in a collision that results in injury or damage. The police may ask to see your driving license and insurance details at the time or later at a police station. Question 28. You've just passed your driving test. How can you reduce your risk of being involved in a collision? Give one answer. A. By always staying close to the vehicle in front. B. By never going over 40 miles per hour. C. By staying in the left-hand lane on all roads. D. By taking further training. The correct answer is D. By taking further training. Explanation. New drivers and riders are often involved in a collision or incident early in their driving career. Due to a lack of experience, they may not react to hazards appropriately. Approved training courses are offered by driver and rider training schools for people who have passed their test but want extra training. Question 29. Why should you switch your headlights on when it first starts to get dark? Give one answer. A. Because the street lights are lit. B. So others can see you more easily. C. So that you blend in with other drivers. D. To make your dials easier to see. The correct answer is B. So others can see you more easily. Explanation. Your headlights and tail lights help others on the road to see you. It may be necessary to turn on your headlights during the day if visibility is reduced, for example, due to heavy rain. In these conditions, the light might fade before the street lights are time to switch on. Be seen to be safe. Question 30. You're waiting in a traffic queue at night. How can you avoid dazzling drivers behind you? Give one answer. A. Balance the clutch with the accelerator. B. Keep your foot on the foot brake. C. Use the parking brake and foot brake together. D. Use the parking brake and release the foot brake. The correct answer is D. Use the parking brake and release the foot brake. Explanation. In queuing traffic, your brake lights can dazzle drivers behind you. If you apply your parking brake, you can take your foot off the foot brake. This will turn off the brake lights so that they can't dazzle the driver behind you. Question 31. You're driving in traffic at the speed limit for the road. What should you do if the driver behind is trying to overtake? Give one answer. A. Accelerate to get away from the driver behind. B. Keep a steady course and allow the driver behind to overtake. C. Move closer to the car ahead, so the driver behind has no room to overtake. D. Wave the driver behind to overtake when it's safe. The correct answer is B. Keep a steady course and allow the driver behind to overtake. Explanation. Keep a steady course to give the driver behind an opportunity to overtake safely. If necessary, slow down. Reacting incorrectly to another driver's impatience can lead to danger. Question 32. How will a roof rack affect your car? Give one answer. A. Fuel consumption will increase. 
B. The car will accelerate faster. C. The engine will use more oil. D. There will be less wind noise. The correct answer is A. Fuel consumption will increase. Explanation. A roof rack increases your car's wind resistance. This will cause an increase in fuel consumption, so you should remove it when it isn't being used. An aerodynamically designed roof rack or box will help reduce wind resistance to a minimum, but the rack or box should still be removed when it isn't in use. Question 33. You're about to go down a steep hill. What should you do to control the speed of your vehicle? Give one answer. A. Select a high gear and use the brakes carefully. B. Select a high gear and use the brakes firmly. C. Select a low gear and avoid using the brakes. D. Select a low gear and use the brakes carefully. The correct answer is D. Select a low gear and use the brakes carefully. Explanation. When driving down a steep hill, gravity will cause your vehicle to speed up. This will make it more difficult for you to stop. To help keep your vehicle's speed under control, select a lower gear to give you more engine braking and make careful use of the brakes. Question 34. What does the solid white line at the side of the road indicate? Give one answer. A. Cycle path. B. Edge of the carriageway. C. Footpath on the left. D. Traffic lights ahead. The correct answer is B. Edge of the carriageway. Explanation. The continuous white line shows the edge of the carriageway. It can be especially useful when visibility is restricted, such as at night or in bad weather. It's discontinued in some places, for example, at junctions, laybys, entrances or other openings. Question 35. What should you do if you're driving on a motorway and you miss the exit that you wanted to take? Give one answer. A. Carefully reverse along the hard shoulder. B. Carefully reverse in the left-hand lane. C. Carry on to the next exit. D. Make a U-turn at the next gap in the central reservation. The correct answer is C. Carry on to the next exit. Explanation. It's illegal to reverse, cross the central reservation or drive against the traffic flow on a motorway. If you miss your exit, carry on until you reach the next one. Ask yourself why you missed your exit. If you think that your concentration is fading, take a break before continuing your journey. Question 36. When may you drive without wearing your seat belt? Give one answer. A. When you're carrying out a maneuver that includes reversing. B. When you're driving slowly in queuing traffic. C. When you're moving off on a hill. D. When you're testing your brakes. The correct answer is A. When you're carrying out a maneuver that includes reversing. Explanation. You may remove your seat belt while you're carrying out a maneuver that includes reversing. However, you must remember to put it back on again before you resume driving. Question 37. You're carrying two 13-year-old children and their parents in your car. Who's responsible for seeing that the children wear seat belts? Give one answer. A. The children. B. The children's parents. C. The front seat passenger. D. U. The driver. The correct answer is D. U. The driver. Explanation. Seat belts save lives and reduce the risk of injury. If you're carrying passengers under 14 years old, it's your responsibility as the driver to ensure that their seat belts are fastened or they're seated in an approved child restraint. Question 38. Why is it particularly important to check your vehicle before making a long motorway journey? 
Give one answer. A. Continuous high speeds increase the risk of your vehicle breaking down. B. Motorway services areas don't deal with breakdowns. C. The road surface will wear down the tires faster. D. You'll have to do more harsh braking on motorways. The correct answer is A. Continuous high speeds increase the risk of your vehicle breaking down. Explanation Before you start your journey, make sure that your vehicle can cope with the demands of high speed driving. You should check a number of things, the main ones being fuel, oil, water, and tires. You also need to plan rest stops if you're making a long journey. Question 39. Who's responsible for making sure that a vehicle isn't overloaded? Give one answer. A. The driver of the vehicle. B. The licensing authority. C. The owner of the items being carried. D. The person who loaded the vehicle. The correct answer is A. The driver of the vehicle. Explanation. Carrying heavy loads will affect control and the vehicle's handling characteristics. If the vehicle you're driving is overloaded, you'll be held responsible. Question 40. Which instrument panel warning light would show that headlights are on main beam? Give one answer. A. B. C. D. The correct answer is A. Explanation. You should be aware of all the warning lights and visual aids on the vehicle you're driving. If you're driving a vehicle for the first time, you should familiarize yourself with all the controls, warning lights, and visual aids before you set off. Question 41. When could the cost of your insurance be reduced? Give one answer. A. When you complete the Pass Plus scheme. B. When you don't wear glasses. C. When you pass the driving test first time. D. When you're under 25 years old. The correct answer is A. When you complete the Pass Plus scheme. Explanation. The cost of insurance varies with your age and how long you've been driving. Usually, the younger you are, the more expensive it is, especially if you're under 25. Pass Plus provides additional training to newly qualified drivers. The scheme is recognized by many insurance companies, and taking this extra training could give you reduced insurance premiums, as well as improving your skills and experience. Question 42. What does the term blind spot mean? Give one answer. A. An area covered by your left hand mirror. B. An area covered by your right hand mirror. C. An area not covered by your headlights. D. An area not visible to the driver. The correct answer is D. An area not visible to the driver. Explanation, modern vehicles provide the driver with a good view of both the road ahead and behind using well-positioned mirrors. However, the mirrors can't see every angle of the scene behind and to the sides of the vehicle. It's essential that you know when and how to check the vehicle's blind spots, so that you're aware of any hidden hazards. Question 43. When should you leave a two-second gap between your vehicle and the one in front? Give one answer. A. When it's dry. B. When it's foggy. C. When it's icy. D. When it's raining. The correct answer is A. When it's dry. Explanation. In good, dry conditions, a driver needs to keep a distance of at least two seconds from the car in front. This should allow enough space for you to stop if the driver in front has to stop suddenly. Question 44. How can you use your vehicle's engine as a brake? Give one answer. A. By changing to a higher gear. B. By changing to a lower gear. C. By selecting neutral gear. 
D. By selecting reverse gear. The correct answer is B. By changing to a lower gear. Explanation, when driving on downhill stretches of road, selecting a lower gear gives increased engine braking. This will prevent excessive use of the brakes, which become less effective if they overheat. Question 45. In order to supervise a learner driver you need to have held a full driving license for the same category of vehicle, for at least three years. What other requirement must you meet? Give one answer. A. To be an approved driving instructor. B. To be at least 21 years old. C. To have a car with dual controls. D. To hold an advanced driving certificate. The correct answer is B. To be at least 21 years old. Explanation. Learner drivers benefit by combining professional driving lessons with private practice. However, you need to be at least 21 years old and have held your driving license for at least 3 years before you can supervise a learner driver. Question 46. What's the legal minimum insurance cover you must have to drive on public roads? Give one answer. A. Comprehensive. B. Personal injury cover. C. Third party only. D. Third party, fire, and theft. The correct answer is C. Third party only. Explanation. The minimum insurance required by law is third party cover. This covers your liability to others involved in a collision but not damage to your vehicle. Basic third-party insurance also won't cover theft or fire damage. Ask your insurance company for advice on the best cover for you and make sure that you read the policy carefully. Question 47. What should you do if your vehicle catches fire while you're driving through a tunnel? Give one answer. A. Drive it out of the tunnel if it's safe to do so. B. Leave it where it is with the engine running. C. Park it away from the carriageway. D. Pull up, then walk to an emergency telephone. The correct answer is A. Drive it out of the tunnel if it's safe to do so. Explanation, if it's possible, and you can do so without causing further danger, it may be safer to drive a vehicle that's on fire out of a tunnel. The greatest danger in a tunnel fire is smoke and suffocation. Question 48. What style of driving causes increased risk to everyone? Give one answer. A. Competitive. B. Considerate. C. Defensive. D. Responsible. The correct answer is A. Competitive. Explanation. Competitive driving increases the risks to everyone and is the opposite of responsible, considerate, and defensive driving. Defensive driving is about questioning the actions of other road users and being prepared for the unexpected. Don't be taken by surprise. Question 49. You're waiting to emerge at a junction. Your view is restricted by parked vehicles. What can help you to see traffic on the road you're joining? Give one answer. A. Checking for traffic in your interior mirror. B. Looking for traffic behind you. C. Making eye contact with other road users. D. Reflections of traffic in windows. The correct answer is D. Reflections of traffic in windows. Explanation. You must be completely sure it's safe to emerge. Try to look for traffic through the windows of the parked cars or in the reflections in windows. Keep looking in all directions as you slowly edge forwards until you can see it's safe. Question 50. You want to put a rear-facing baby seat on the front passenger seat. What must you do if the passenger seat is protected by a frontal airbag? Give one answer. A. Ask a passenger to hold the baby. B. 
Deactivate the airbag. C. Put the child in an adult seat belt. D. Turn the seat to face sideways. The correct answer is B. Deactivate the airbag. Explanation. It's illegal to fit a rear-facing baby seat into a passenger seat protected by an active frontal airbag. If the airbag activates, it could cause serious injury or even death to the child. You must secure it in a different seat or deactivate the relevant airbag. Follow the manufacturer's advice when fitting a baby seat. Question 1. What does tailgating mean? Give one answer. A. Driving with rear fog lights on. B. Following another vehicle too closely. C. Reversing into a parking space. D. Using the rear door of a hatchback car. The correct answer is B. Following another vehicle too closely. Question 2. What should the driver of the gray car, arrowed, be especially aware of? Give one answer. A. Doors opening on parked cars. B. Empty parking spaces. C. The uneven road surface. D. Traffic following behind. The correct answer is A. Doors opening on parked cars. Question 3. Why must you take extra care when turning right at this junction? Give one answer. A. The footpaths are narrow. B. The road markings are faint. C. The road surface is poor. D. The view is restricted. The correct answer is D. The view is restricted. Question 4. How? Will a school crossing patrol signal you to stop? Give one answer. A. By displaying a stop sign. B. By displaying a red light. C. By giving you an arm signal. D. By pointing to children on the opposite pavement. The correct answer is A. By displaying a stop sign. Question 5. What should you do, when you see two elderly pedestrians about to cross the road ahead? Give one answer. A. Be careful, they may misjudge your speed. B. Expect them to wait for you to pass. C. Speed up to get past them quickly. D. Stop and wave them across the road. The correct answer is A. Be careful they may misjudge your speed. Question 6. You're following a long vehicle. As it approaches a crossroads, it signals left but moves out to the right. What should you do? Give one answer. A. Assume the signal is wrong and that it's turning right. B. Get closer in order to pass it quickly. C. Overtake it as it starts to slow down. D. Stay well back and give it room. The correct answer is D. Stay well back and give it room. Question 7. You break down on a motorway. You need to call for help, why may it be better to use an emergency roadside telephone, rather than a mobile phone, give one answer. A. It allows easy location by the emergency services. B. It connects you to a local garage. C. Mobile phones don't work on motorways. D. Using a mobile phone will distract other drivers. The correct answer is A. It allows easy location by the emergency services. Question 8. On which part of a motorway are amber reflective studs found? Give one answer. A. Between each pair of lanes. B. Between the acceleration lane and the carriageway. C. Between the central reservation and the carriageway. D. Between the hard shoulder and the carriageway. The correct answer is C. 
between the central reservation and the carriageway. Question 9. What's the national speed limit for cars and motorcycles on a dual carriageway? Give one answer. A. 30 miles per hour. B. 50 miles per hour. C. 60 miles per hour. D. 70 miles per hour. The correct answer is D. 70 miles per hour. Question 10. There are no speed limit signs on the road. How is a 30 miles per hour limit indicated? Give one answer. A. By double or single yellow lines. B. By hazard warning lines. C. By pedestrian islands. D. By street lighting. The correct answer is D. By street lighting. Question 11. When may you stop, and wait in a box junction, give one answer. A. When oncoming traffic prevents you from turning right. B. When you're in a queue of traffic going ahead. C. When you're in a queue of traffic turning left. D. When you're on a roundabout. The correct answer is A. When oncoming traffic prevents you from turning right. Question 12. What does this sign mean? Give one answer. A. No trams ahead. B. Oncoming trams. C. Trams crossing ahead. D. Trams only. The correct answer is C. Trams crossing ahead. Question 13. Where would you see these road markings? Give one answer. A. At a level crossing. B. At a pedestrian crossing. C. On a motorway slip road. D. On a single track road. The correct answer is C. On a motorway slip road. Question 14. What does this sign mean? Give one answer. A. 11 ton weight limit. B. Right hand lane, T junction only. C. Right hand lane, closed ahead. D. Through traffic to use left lane. The correct answer is C. Right hand lane closed ahead. Question 15. You see a car on the hard shoulder of a motorway, with a help pennant displayed. What does this mean? Give one answer. A. The driver is a foreign visitor. B. The driver is a rescue patrol officer. C. The driver is first aid trained. D. The driver is likely to be a disabled person. The correct answer is D. The driver is likely to be a disabled person. Question 16. You're signaling to turn right in busy traffic. How would you confirm your intention safely? Give one answer. A. Flash your headlights. B. Give an arm signal. C. Position over the center line. D. Sound a horn. The correct answer is B. Give an arm signal. Question 17. You're on a three-lane motorway. There are red reflective studs on your left and white ones to your right. Which lane are you in? Give one answer. A. In the left-hand lane. B. In the middle lane. C. In the right-hand lane. D. On the hard shoulder. The correct answer is A. In the left-hand lane. Question 18. You're traveling on a road that has speed humps. What should you do when the driver in front is traveling more slowly than you? Give one answer. A. Flash your headlights. B. Overtake as soon as you can. C. Slow down and stay behind. D. Sound your horn. The correct answer is C. Slow down and stay behind. 
Question 19. The fluid level in your battery is low. What should you top it up with? Give one answer. A. Battery acid. B. Distilled water. C. Engine coolant. D. Engine oil. The correct answer is B. Distilled water. Question 20. You're approaching a crossroads. The traffic lights have failed. What should you do? Give one answer. A. Be prepared to brake sharply to a stop. B. Be prepared to stop for any traffic. C. Brake and stop only for large vehicles. D. Brake sharply to a stop before looking. The correct answer is B. Be prepared to stop for any traffic. Question 21. You're in a line of traffic. The driver behind you is following very closely. What action should you take? Give one answer. A. Ignore the following driver and continue to travel within the speed limit. B. Move over to a position just left of the center line of the road. C. Signal left and wave the following driver past. D. Slow down, gradually increasing the gap between you and the vehicle in front. The correct answer is D. Slow down, gradually increasing the gap between you and the vehicle in front. Question 22. What does this signal mean? Give one answer. A. Both trams and cars can continue. B. Both trams and cars must stop. C. Cars must stop. D. Trams must stop. The correct answer is D. Trams must stop. Question 23. What must you do when you see this sign? Give one answer. A. Stop even if the road is clear. B. Stop only if a red light is showing. C. Stop only if children are waiting to cross. D. Stop only if traffic is approaching. The correct answer is A. Stop even if the road is clear. Question 24. Before starting a journey, it's wise to plan your route. How can you do this? Give one answer. A. Check your vehicle registration document. B. Contact your local garage. C. Look at a map. D. Look in your vehicle handbook. The correct answer is C. Look at a map. Question 25. A person has been injured. They may be suffering from shock. What are the warning signs to look for? Give one answer. A. Flushed complexion. B. Pale gray skin. C. Slow pulse. D. Warm dry skin. The correct answer is B. Pale gray skin. Question 26. What must you have, when you apply to renew your vehicle excise license? Give one answer. A. A valid driving license. B. The handbook. C. The vehicle's chassis number. D. Valid insurance. The correct answer is D. Valid insurance. Question 27. Overall stopping distance, is made up of thinking distance and braking distance. You're on a good, dry road surface, with good brakes and tires. What's the typical braking distance from 50 miles per hour? Give one answer. A. 14 meters, 46 feet. B. 24 meters, 80 feet. C. 38 meters, 125 feet. D. 55 meters, 180 feet. The correct answer is C. 38 meters, 125 feet. Question 28. You're involved in a collision. 
afterwards, which document may the police ask you to produce? Give one answer. A. Driving license. B. Theory test certificate. C. Vehicle registration document. D. Vehicle service record. The correct answer is A. Driving license. Question 29. You're at the front of a queue of traffic waiting to turn right into a side road. Why is it important to check your right mirror just before turning? Give one answer. A. To check for emerging traffic. B. To check for overtaking vehicles. C. To look for pedestrians about to cross. D. To make sure the side road is clear. The correct answer is B. To check for overtaking vehicles. Question 30. What must a driver do at a pelican crossing, when the amber light is flashing? Give one answer. A. Always wait for the green light before proceeding. B. Give way to any pedestrians on the crossing. C. Signal the pedestrian to cross. D. Wait for the red and amber light before proceeding. The correct answer is B. Give way to any pedestrians on the crossing. Question 31. You intend to turn left from a main road into a minor road. What should you do as you approach it? Give one answer. A. Keep in the middle of the road. B. Keep just left of the middle of the road. C. Keep well to the left of the road. D. Swing out to the right just before turning. The correct answer is C. Keep well to the left of the road. Question 32. What must you make sure of before you drive someone else's vehicle? Give one answer. A. That the insurance documents are in the vehicle. B. That the vehicle is insured for your use. C. That the vehicle owner has third-party insurance cover. D. That your own vehicle has insurance cover. The correct answer is B. That the vehicle is insured for your use. Question 33. Your vehicle has a puncture on a motorway. What should you do? Give one answer. A. Drive slowly to the next service area to get assistance. B. Pull up on the hard shoulder. Change the wheel as quickly as possible. C. Pull up on the hard shoulder. Use the emergency phone to get assistance. D. Switch on your hazard warning lights. Stop in your lane. The correct answer is C. Pull up on the hard shoulder. Use the emergency phone to get assistance. Question 34. What does driving a vehicle with anti-lock brakes allow you to do? Give one answer. A. Brake harder because it's impossible to skid. B. Drive at higher speeds. C. Pay less attention to the road ahead. D. Steer and brake harshly at the same time. The correct answer is D. Steer and brake harshly at the same time. Question 35. You're traveling along this narrow country road. How should you pass the cyclist? Give one answer. A. Change down one gear before you pass. B. Keep close to them as you pass. C. Leave them plenty of room as you pass. D. Sound your horn as you pass. The correct answer is C. Leave them plenty of room as you pass. Question 36. Your vehicle is fitted with a handheld telephone. What should you do to use the phone? Give one answer. A. Be particularly careful at junctions. B. Find a safe place to stop. C. Reduce your speed. D. Steer the vehicle with one hand. The correct answer is B. Find a safe place to stop. 
Question 37. Why should you allow extra room when overtaking a motorcyclist on a windy day? Give one answer. A. The rider may be blown across in front of you. B. The rider may be traveling faster than normal. C. The rider may stop suddenly. D. The rider may turn off suddenly to get out of the wind. The correct answer is A. The rider may be blown across in front of you. Question 38. You're driving on the motorway. Well before you reach your intended exit, where should you position your vehicle, give one answer. A. In any lane. B. In the left hand lane. C. In the middle lane. D. On the hard shoulder. The correct answer is B. In the left hand lane. Question 39. What will be the result of having your vehicle properly serviced? Give one answer. A. Better fuel economy. B. Lower vehicle excise duty, road tax. C. Reduced insurance premiums. D. Slower journey times. The correct answer is A. Better fuel economy. Question 40. When will you feel the effects of engine braking? Give one answer. A. When you change to a higher gear. B. When you change to a lower gear. C. When you only use the handbrake. D. When you're in neutral. The correct answer is B. When you change to a lower gear. Question 41. Before driving through a tunnel, what should you do? Give one answer. A. Close your sunroof. B. Remove any sunglasses. C. Switch off your radio. D. Switch on your windscreen wipers. The correct answer is B. Remove any sunglasses. Question 42. You're driving on an open road in dry weather. What should the distance be between you and the vehicle in front? Give one answer. A. A two-second time gap. B. One car length. C. Two car lengths. D. Two meters, six feet, six inches. The correct answer is A. A two-second time gap. Question 43. You're driving towards this left-hand bend, what dangers should you be aware of? Give one answer. A. A vehicle overtaking you. B. No sign to warn you of the bend. C. No white lines in the center of the road. D. Pedestrians walking towards you. The correct answer is D. Pedestrians walking towards you. Question 44. You're on a motorway, there's a contraflow system ahead, what would you expect to find? Give one answer. A. Lower speed limits. B. Speed humps. C. Temporary traffic lights. D. Wider lanes than normal. The correct answer is A. Lower speed limits. Question 45. Your vehicle is insured third party only. What does this cover? Give one answer. A. All damage and injury. B. Damage to other vehicles. C. Damage to your vehicle. D. Injury to yourself. The correct answer is B. Damage to other vehicles. Question 46. Your vehicle catches fire while driving through a tunnel, it's still drivable, what should you do? Give one answer. A. Drive it out of the tunnel if you can do so. B. Leave it where it is, with the engine running. C. Park it away from the carriageway. D. Pull up, then walk to an emergency telephone. The correct answer is A. Drive it out of the tunnel if you can do so. 
Question 47. What can result when you travel for long distances in neutral, known as coasting, give one answer. A. Easier steering. B. Improvement in control. C. Increased fuel consumption. D. Reduction in control. The correct answer is D. Reduction in control. Question 48. After passing your driving test, you suffer from ill health. This affects your driving. What must you do? Give one answer. A. Always drive accompanied. B. Avoid using motorways. C. Inform the licensing authority. D. Inform your local police. The correct answer is C. Inform the licensing authority. Question 49. When must you use dipped headlights during the day? Give one answer. A. All the time. B. In poor visibility. C. On narrow streets. D. When parking. The correct answer is B. In poor visibility. Question 50. When is it acceptable for a passenger to travel in a car, without wearing a seat belt, give one answer. A. When they're exempt for medical reasons. B. When they're sitting in the rear seat. C. When they're under 1.5 meters, 5 feet, in height. D. When they're under 14 years old. The correct answer is A. When they're exempt for medical reasons. Question 1. What's the main hazard shown in this picture? Give one answer. A. Parked cars around the corner. B. The cyclist crossing the road. C. Vehicles doing U turns. D. Vehicles turning right. The correct answer is B. The cyclist crossing the road. Explanation Look at the picture carefully and try to imagine you're there. The cyclist in this picture appears to be trying to cross the road. You must be able to deal with the unexpected, especially when you're approaching a hazardous junction. Look well ahead to give yourself time to deal with any hazards. Question 2 What should you do if a driver pulls out of a side road in front of you, causing you to brake hard? Give one answer. A. Flash your lights to show your annoyance. B. Ignore the error and stay calm. C. Overtake as soon as possible. D. Sound your horn to show your annoyance. The correct answer is B. Ignore the error and stay calm. Explanation. Be tolerant if a vehicle emerges and you have to brake quickly. Anyone can make a mistake, so don't react aggressively. Be alert where there are side roads and be especially careful where there are parked vehicles, because these can make it difficult for emerging drivers to see you. Question 3. You're waiting to turn right out of a minor road, it's clear to the left but a lorry is coming from the right, why should you wait, even if you have enough time to turn, give one answer. A. Anything overtaking the lorry will be hidden from view. B. The load on the lorry might be unstable. C. The lorry could suddenly speed up. D. The lorry might be slowing down. The correct answer is A. Anything overtaking the lorry will be hidden from view. Explanation. Large vehicles can hide other vehicles that are overtaking, especially motorcycles. You need to be aware of the possibility of hidden vehicles and not assume that it's safe to turn. Question 4. Which plate may appear with this road sign? Give one answer. A. B. C. D. The correct answer is A. Explanation. Road humps are used to slow down traffic. They're found in places where there are often pedestrians, such as shopping areas, near schools, residential areas. 
Watch out for people close to the curb or crossing the road. Question 5. What's the national speed limit on motorways for cars and motorcycles? Give one answer. A. 30 miles per hour. B. 50 miles per hour. C. 60 miles per hour. D. 70 miles per hour. The correct answer is D. 70 miles per hour. Explanation, traveling at the national speed limit, doesn't allow you to hog the right-hand lane, always use the left-hand lane whenever possible. When leaving a motorway, get into the left-hand lane well before your exit. Reduce your speed on the slip road and look out for sharp bends or curves and traffic queuing at roundabouts. Question 6. Which vehicles aren't allowed to use the right-hand lane of a three-lane motorway? Give one answer. A. Motorcycle and sidecar outfits. B. Motorcycles. C. Small delivery vans. D. Vehicles towing a trailer. The correct answer is D. Vehicles towing a trailer. Explanation. On the motorway, any vehicle towing a trailer is restricted to 60 miles per hour, it isn't allowed in the right-hand lane, as it might hold up faster moving traffic that wishes to overtake in that lane. Question 7. You're traveling along a motorway. Where would you find a crawler or climbing lane? Give one answer. A. Along the hard shoulder. B. Before a junction. C. Before a service area. D. On a steep gradient. The correct answer is D. On a steep gradient. Explanation. Large, slow-moving vehicles can hinder the progress of other traffic. On a steep gradient, an extra crawler lane may be provided for slow-moving vehicles to allow faster-moving traffic to flow more easily. Question 8. What does this sign mean? Give one answer. A. Bend to the right. B. No right turn. C. No traffic from the right. D. Road on the right closed. The correct answer is B. No right turn. Explanation. The no right turn sign may be used to warn road users that there's a no entry prohibition on a road to the right ahead. Question 9. You're about to overtake. What should you do when you see this sign? Give one answer. A. Hold back until you can see clearly ahead. B. Move to the right to get a better view. C. Overtake the other driver as quickly as possible. D. Switch your headlights on before overtaking. The correct answer is A. Hold back until you can see clearly ahead. Explanation, you won't be able to see any hazards that might be hidden in the dip. As well as oncoming traffic, the dip may conceal cyclists, horse riders, parked vehicles, pedestrians in the road. Question 10. What do these zigzag white lines mean? Give one answer. A. No parking at any time. B. Parking allowed only for a short time. C. Slow down to 20 miles per hour. D. Sounding horns isn't allowed. The correct answer is A. No parking at any time. Explanation. The approach to an exit from a pedestrian crossing is marked with zigzag lines. You mustn't park on them or overtake the leading vehicle when approaching the crossing. Parking here would block the view for pedestrians and approaching traffic. Question 11. What does this motorway sign mean? Give one answer. A. No services for 50 miles. B. Obstruction 50 meters, 164 feet, ahead. C. Temporary maximum speed 50 miles per hour. D. Temporary minimum speed 50 miles per hour. The correct answer is C. Temporary maximum speed 50 miles per hour. 
Explanation, look out for signs above your lane or on the central reservation. These will give you important information or warnings about the road ahead. To allow for the high speed of motorway traffic, these signs may light up some distance from any hazard. Don't ignore the signs just because the road looks clear to you. Question 12. What does this sign indicate? Give one answer. A. A cycle route. B. A diversion route. C. A pedestrian zone. D. A picnic area. The correct answer is B, a diversion route. Explanation, when a diversion route has been put in place, drivers are advised to follow a symbol, which may be a black triangle, square, circle or diamond shape on a yellow background. Question 13. What color are the reflective studs between the hard shoulder and the left-hand lane of a motorway? Give one answer. A. Amber. B. Green. C. Red. D. White. The correct answer is C. Red. Explanation. Red studs are placed between the edge of the carriageway and the hard shoulder. Where slip roads leave or join the motorway, the studs are green. Question 14. You're on a three-lane motorway. Which lane are you in if there are red reflective studs on your left and white ones to your right? Give one answer. A. In the left-hand lane. B. In the middle lane. C. In the right-hand lane. D. On the hard shoulder. The correct answer is A. In the left-hand lane. Explanation. The colors of the reflective studs on the motorway and their locations are Red, between the hard shoulder and the carriageway White, between lanes Amber, between the carriageway and the central reservation Green, along slip road exits and entrances Bright green-yellow, at roadworks and contraflow systems Question 15 you're looking for somewhere to safely park your vehicle. Where would you choose to park? Give one answer. A. At, or near a bus stop. B. In a designated parking space. C. Near the brow of a hill. D. On the approach to a level crossing. The correct answer is B. In a designated parking space. Explanation, it may be tempting to park where you shouldn't while you run a quick errand. Careless parking is a selfish act and could endanger other road users. Question 16. When may you sound your vehicle's horn? Give one answer. A. To attract a friend's attention. B. To give you right of way. C. To make slower drivers move over. D. To warn others of your presence. The correct answer is D. To warn others of your presence. Explanation, never sound your vehicle's horn aggressively. You mustn't sound it when driving in a built-up area between 11.30 p.m. and 7 a.m., or when you're stationary, unless another road user poses a danger. Don't scare animals by sounding your horn. Question 17. Why are place names painted on the road surface? Give one answer. A. To help you select the correct lane in good time. B. To prevent you from changing lanes. C. To restrict the flow of traffic. D. To warn of oncoming traffic. The correct answer is A. To help you select the correct lane in good time. Explanation, the names of towns and cities may be painted on the road, at busy junctions and complex road systems, they guide you into the correct lane in good time, allowing traffic to flow more freely. Question 18. What should you do when you're following a motorcyclist along a road that has a poor surface? Give one answer. A. 
Allow extra room in case they swerve to avoid potholes. B. Allow the same room as normal to avoid wasting road space. C. Follow closely so they can see you in their mirrors. D. Overtake immediately to avoid delays. The correct answer is A. Allow extra room in case they swerve to avoid potholes. Explanation, to avoid being unbalanced, a motorcyclist might swerve, to avoid potholes and bumps in the road. Be prepared for this and allow them extra space. Question 19. You're in the right-hand lane of a three-lane motorway. What do these overhead signs mean? Give one answer. A. Leave the motorway at the next exit. B. Move to the left and reduce your speed to 50 miles per hour. C. There are roadworks 50 meters, 55 yards ahead. D. Use the hard shoulder until you pass the hazard. The correct answer is B. Move to the left and reduce your speed to 50 miles per hour. Explanation. You must obey these signs even if there appear to be no problems ahead. There could be queuing traffic or another hazard that you can't see yet. Question 20. You're traveling along a motorway. When are you allowed to overtake on the left? Give one answer. A. When in queues and traffic to your right is moving more slowly than you are. B. When the traffic in the right-hand lane is signaling right. C. When you can see well ahead that the hard shoulder is clear. D. When you warn drivers behind by signaling left. The correct answer is A. When in queues and traffic to your right is moving more slowly than you are. Explanation. Never overtake on the left, unless the traffic is moving in queues and the queue on your right is moving more slowly than the one you're in. Question 21. What does this sign mean? Give one answer. A. Bus is turning. B. Keep right. C. Many roundabout. D. Ring road. The correct answer is C. Many roundabout. Explanation. When you see this sign, look out for any direction signs and judge whether you need to signal your intentions. Do this in good time so that other road users approaching the roundabout know what you're planning to do. Question 22. What's a statutory off-road notification, SORN, give one answer. A. A notification to tell DVLA that a vehicle isn't being used on the road. B. A notification to tell DVSA that a vehicle doesn't have a current MOT. C. Information held by insurance companies to check a vehicle is insured. D. Information kept by the police about the owner of a vehicle. The correct answer is A. A notification to tell DVLA that a vehicle isn't being used on the road. Explanation. If you want to keep a vehicle untaxed and off the public road, you must make a SORN. It's an offense not to do so. Your SORN is valid until your vehicle is taxed, sold, or scrapped. Question 23. What can you expect if you drive using rapid acceleration and heavy braking? Give one answer. A. Increased fuel consumption. B. Increased road safety. C. Reduced exhaust emissions. D. Reduced pollution. The correct answer is A, increased fuel consumption. Explanation, using the controls smoothly can reduce fuel consumption by about 15%, as well as reducing wear and tear on your vehicle. Plan ahead and anticipate changes of speed well in advance. This will reduce the need to accelerate rapidly or brake sharply. Question 24. You stop on the hard shoulder of a motorway and use the emergency telephone. Where's the best place to wait for help to arrive? Give one answer. A. Next to the phone. B. On the hard shoulder. C. 
well away from the carriageway. D. With your vehicle. The correct answer is C, well away from the carriageway. Explanation, when you're on the hard shoulder, you're at risk of being injured by motorway traffic. The safest place to wait is away from the carriageway, but near enough to see the emergency services arriving. Question 25. What does this signal from a police officer mean to oncoming traffic? Give one answer. A. Go ahead. B. Stop. C. Turn left. D. Turn right. The correct answer is B. Stop. Explanation. Police officers may need to direct traffic, for example, at a junction where the traffic lights have broken down. Check your copy of the highway code for the signals that they use. Question 26. You arrive at the scene of a crash where someone is bleeding heavily from a wound in their arm. Nothing is embedded in the wound. What could you do to help? Give one answer. A. Apply pressure over the wound. B. Dab the wound. C. Get them a drink. D. Walk them around and keep them talking. The correct answer is A. Apply pressure over the wound. Explanation, if possible, lay the casualty down. Protect yourself from exposure to blood and when you're sure there's nothing in the wound, apply firm pressure using clean material. Question 27. A casualty isn't breathing normally and needs CPR. At what rate should you press down and release on the center of their chest? Give one answer. A. 10 times per minute. B. 120 times per minute. C. 240 times per minute. D. 60 times per minute. The correct answer is B. 120 times per minute. Explanation, if a casualty isn't breathing normally, cardiopulmonary resuscitation, CPR, may be needed to maintain circulation. Place two hands on the center of the chest and press down hard and fast, around 5 to 6 centimeters and about twice a second. Question 28. When must your vehicle have valid insurance cover? Give one answer. A. Before you can make a sorn. B. Before you can scrap the vehicle. C. Before you can sell the vehicle. D. Before you can tax the vehicle. The correct answer is D. Before you can tax the vehicle. Explanation. Your vehicle must have valid insurance cover before you can tax it. If required. It will also need to have a valid MOT certificate. You can tax your vehicle online, by phone or at certain post offices. Question 29. What do you need before you can legally use a motor vehicle on the road? Give one answer. A. A vehicle handbook. B. An appropriate driving license. C. Breakdown cover. D. Proof of your identity. The correct answer is B, an appropriate driving license. Explanation, using a motor vehicle on the road illegally carries a heavy fine and can lead to penalty points on your driving license. You must hold a valid driving license for the class of vehicle you're using be insured to drive the vehicle. If required, the vehicle must have a current MOT test certificate and be taxed for use on the road. Question 30. How should you signal if you're going straight ahead at a roundabout? Give one answer. A. Signal left after you leave the roundabout and enter the new road. B. Signal left just after you pass the exit before the one you are going to take. C. Signal right on the approach and then left to leave the roundabout. D. Signal right on the approach to the roundabout and keep the signal on. The correct answer is B. Signal left just after you pass the exit before the one you're going to take.
Explanation, to go straight ahead at a roundabout, you should normally approach in the left-hand lane, but check the road markings. At some roundabouts, the left lane on approach is marked left turn only, so make sure you use the correct lane to go ahead. You won't normally need to signal as you approach, but signal before you leave the roundabout, as other road users need to know your intentions. Question 31. A police officer asks to see your documents. You don't have them with you. How many days do you have to produce them at a police station? Give one answer. A. 14 days. B. 21 days. C. 5 days. D. 7 days. The correct answer is D. 7 days. Explanation, you don't have to carry your vehicle's documents wherever you go. If a police officer asks to see them and you don't have them with you, you may be asked to produce them at a police station within seven days. Question 32. An adult casualty isn't breathing. To maintain circulation, CPR should be given. What's the correct depth to press down on their chest? Give one answer. A. 1 to 2 centimeters. B. 10 to 15 centimeters. C. 15 to 20 centimeters. D. 5 to 6 centimeters. The correct answer is D. 5 to 6 centimeters. Explanation An adult casualty isn't breathing normally. To maintain circulation, place two hands on the center of the chest. Then press down hard and fast, around 5 to 6 centimeters and about twice a second. Question 33. What could cause you to crash if the level is allowed to get too low? Give one answer. A. Antifreeze level. B. Battery water level. C. Brake fluid level. D. Radiator coolant level. The correct answer is C, brake fluid level. Explanation, you should carry out frequent checks on all fluid levels but particularly brake fluid. As the brake pads or shoes wear down, the brake fluid level will drop. If it drops below the minimum mark on the fluid reservoir, air could enter the hydraulic system and lead to a loss of braking efficiency or even complete brake failure. Question 34. You're following other vehicles in fog. You have your headlights on dipped beam. What else can you do to reduce the chances of being in a collision? Give one answer. A. Keep a safe distance from the vehicle in front. B. Keep close to the vehicle in front. C. Keep up with the faster vehicles. D. Use main beam instead of dipped headlights. The correct answer is A, keep a safe distance from the vehicle in front. Explanation, when it's foggy, use your headlights on dipped beam. This will help you see and be seen by other road users. If visibility is seriously reduced, consider using front and rear fog lights if you have them. Keep to a sensible speed and don't follow the vehicle in front too closely. If the road is wet and slippery, you'll need to allow twice the normal stopping distance. Question 35. A collision has just happened. An injured person is lying in a busy road. What's the first thing you should do? Give one answer. A. Make sure the injured person is kept warm. B. Place them in the recovery position. C. Treat the person for shock. D. Warn other traffic. The correct answer is D. Warn other traffic. Explanation, the most immediate danger is further collisions and fire. You could warn other traffic by switching on hazard warning lights, displaying an advance warning triangle or sign, but not on a motorway, or by any other means that doesn't put you or others at risk. Question 36. 
What's the main benefit of driving a four-wheel drive vehicle? Give one answer. A. Improved grip on the road. B. Improved passenger comfort. C. Lower fuel consumption. D. Shorter stopping distances. The correct answer is A. Improved grip on the road. Explanation. By driving all four wheels, the vehicle has maximum grip on the road. This grip is especially helpful when traveling on slippery or uneven surfaces. However, having four-wheel drive doesn't replace the skills you need to drive safely. Question 37. You're driving towards this level crossing. What would be the first warning of an approaching train? Give one answer. A. A steady amber light. B. Both half barriers down. C. One half barrier down. D. Twin flashing red lights. The correct answer is A. A steady amber light. Explanation. The steady amber light will be followed by twin flashing red lights that mean you must stop. An alarm will also sound to alert you to the fact that a train is approaching. Question 38. You're driving on a road with several lanes. What do these signs above the lanes mean? Give one answer. A. The two left lanes are open. B. The two right lanes are open. C. Traffic in the left lanes should stop. D. Traffic in the right lanes should stop. The correct answer is A. The two left lanes are open. Explanation. On some busy roads, lane control signals are used to vary the number of lanes available to give priority to the main traffic flow. A green arrow indicates that the lane is available to traffic facing the signal. A white diagonal arrow means that the lane is closed ahead and traffic should move to the next lane on the left. A red cross means that the lane is closed to traffic facing the signal. Question 39. What advice should you give to a driver who has had a few alcoholic drinks at a party? Give one answer. A. Drive home carefully and slowly. B. Go home by public transport. C. Have a strong cup of coffee and then drive home. D. Wait a short while and then drive home. The correct answer is B. Go home by public transport. Explanation, drinking black coffee or waiting a few hours won't make any difference. Alcohol takes time to leave the body. A driver who has been drinking should go home by public transport or taxi. They might even be unfit to drive the following morning. Question 40. You're about to reverse into a side road. What should you do if a pedestrian is waiting to cross behind your car? Give one answer. A. Give way to the pedestrian. B. Reverse before the pedestrian starts to cross. C. Sound your horn to warn the pedestrian. D. Wave to the pedestrian to stop. The correct answer is A. Give way to the pedestrian. Explanation. If you need to reverse into a side road, try to find a place that's free from traffic and pedestrians. Look all around before and during the maneuver, stop and give way to any pedestrians who want to cross behind you. Avoid waving them across, sounding the horn, flashing your lights or giving any signals that could mislead them and create a dangerous situation. Question 41. You're waiting at a level crossing. What should you do if the red warning lights continue to flash after a train has passed by? Give one answer. A. Continue to wait. B. Drive across carefully. C. Get out and investigate. D. Telephone the signal operator. The correct answer is A. Continue to wait. Explanation. At a level crossing, Flashing red lights mean you must stop. If the train passes but the lights keep flashing, wait. Another train may be coming. 
Question 42. How should you give an arm signal to turn left? Give one answer. A. B. C. D. The correct answer is C. Explanation. There may be occasions when other road users are unable to see your indicator, such as in bright sunlight or at a busy, complicated junction. In these cases, an arm signal will help others to understand your intentions. Question 43. What's most likely to waste fuel? Give one answer. A. Driving on motorways. B. Reducing your speed. C. Underinflated tires. D. Using different brands of fuel. The correct answer is C. Underinflated tires. Explanation. Wasting fuel costs you money and also causes unnecessary pollution. Ensuring your tires are correctly inflated, avoiding carrying unnecessary weight and removing a roof rack that's not in use will all help to reduce your fuel consumption. Question 44. How can you reduce the damage your vehicle causes to the environment? Give one answer. A. Anticipate well ahead. B. Brake heavily. C. Use busy routes. D. Use narrow side streets. The correct answer is A. Anticipate well ahead. Explanation. By looking well ahead and recognizing hazards in good time, you can avoid late and heavy braking. Watch the traffic flow and look well ahead for potential hazards so you can control your speed in good time. Avoid over-revving the engine and accelerating harshly, as this increases wear to the engine and uses more fuel. Question 45. Why should you allow extra room while overtaking a motorcyclist on a windy day? Give one answer. A. The rider may be blown in front of you. B. The rider may be traveling faster than normal. C. The rider may stop suddenly. D. The rider may turn off suddenly to get out of the wind. The correct answer is A. The rider may be blown in front of you. Explanation. If you're driving in high winds, be aware that the conditions might make a motorcyclist, or cyclist, swerve or wobble. Take this into consideration if you're following or wish to overtake a two-wheeled vehicle. Question 46. What can seriously reduce your ability to concentrate? Give one answer. A. Busy roads. B. Drugs. C. Tinted windows. D. Weather conditions. The correct answer is B. Drugs. Explanation. Both recreational drugs and prescribed medicine can affect your concentration. It's also an offense to drive with certain drugs in your body and a positive test could lead to a conviction. Question 47. Why is it bad technique to coast when you're driving downhill? Give one answer. A. The engine will overheat. B. The fuel consumption will increase. C. The tires will wear more quickly. D. The vehicle will gain speed more quickly. The correct answer is D. The vehicle will gain speed more quickly. Explanation. Coasting is when you allow the vehicle to freewheel in neutral or with the clutch pedal depressed. When traveling downhill, this will cause the vehicle to gain speed more quickly as you lose the benefits of engine braking, it may even lead to a loss of control. You shouldn't coast, especially when approaching hazards such as junctions or bends and when traveling downhill. Question 48 when may a passenger travel in a car without wearing a seat belt? Give one answer. A. When they're exempt for medical reasons. B. When they're sitting in the rear seat. C. When they're under 1.5 meters, 5 feet, in height. D. When they're under 14 years old. The correct answer is A. When they're exempt for medical reasons. 
Explanation, if you have adult passengers, it's their responsibility to wear a seat belt, but you should still remind them to use one as they get in the car. It's your responsibility to make sure that all children in your car are secured with an appropriate restraint. Exemptions are allowed for those with a medical exemption certificate. Question 49. What should you do if you start to feel drowsy while you're driving on a motorway? Give one answer. A. Open a window and stop as soon as it's safe and legal. B. Slow down and let other drivers overtake. C. Speed up to arrive at your destination sooner. D. Stop on the hard shoulder for a sleep. The correct answer is A. Open a window and stop as soon as it's safe and legal. Explanation, never stop on the hard shoulder to rest. If there's no service area for several miles, leave the motorway at the next exit and find somewhere safe and legal to pull over. Question 50. What does it mean if the Electronic Stability Control, ESC, indicator lamp lights up while you're driving? Give one answer. A. The ESC system has a fault. B. The ESC system has activated. C. The ESC system is running a routine test. D. The ESC system is switched off. The correct answer is B. The ESC system has activated. Explanation, ESC is a computer control technology that detects reduced traction and automatically makes corrective adjustments to prevent loss of control. The ESC lamp comes on to alert the driver that the system has activated and the car is approaching its handling limits. It's a powerful driver aid but it cannot save a car once its traction limits have been exceeded. Question 1. Which vehicle will use a blue flashing beacon? Give one answer. A. Bomb disposal. B. Breakdown recovery. C. Motorway maintenance. D. Snow plow. The correct answer is A. Bomb disposal. Explanation. Emergency vehicles use blue flashing lights. If you see or hear one, move out of its way as soon as it's safe and legal to do so. Question 2. Why must you take great care when emerging from this junction? Give one answer. A. The footpath is narrow. B. The curbs are high. C. The road surface is poor. D. The view is restricted. The correct answer is D. The view is restricted. Explanation, you may have to pull forward slowly until you can see up and down the road. Be aware that the traffic approaching the junction can't see you either. If you don't know that it's clear, don't go. Question 3. You're approaching a roundabout. What should you do if a cyclist ahead is signaling to turn right? Give one answer. A. Give a warning with your horn. B. Give the cyclist plenty of room. C. Overtake on the right. D. Signal the cyclist to move across. The correct answer is B. Give the cyclist plenty of room. Explanation. If you're following a cyclist who's signaling to turn right at a roundabout, leave plenty of room. Give them space and time to get into the correct lane. Question 4. You're following a long vehicle approaching a crossroads. What should you do if the driver signals right but moves close to the left-hand curb? Give one answer. A. Overtake on the right-hand side. B. Report the driver to the police. C. Wait behind the long vehicle. D. Warn the driver about the wrong signal. The correct answer is C. Wait behind the long vehicle. Explanation, when a long vehicle is going to turn right, it may need to keep close to the left-hand curb. This is to prevent the rear end of the trailer cutting the corner. 
you need to be aware of how long vehicles behave in such situations. Don't overtake the lorry, because it could turn as you're alongside. Stay behind and wait for it to turn. Question 5. You're joining a motorway from a slip road. How should you deal with traffic already on the motorway? Give one answer. A. Carry on along the hard shoulder until you see a safe gap. B. Match your speed to traffic in the left-hand lane and filter into a safe gap. C. Stop at the end of the slip road and look for a safe gap. D. Use the slip road to accelerate until you're moving much faster than the motorway traffic. The correct answer is B. Match your speed to traffic in the left-hand lane and filter into a safe gap. Explanation. You should give way to traffic already on the motorway. Where possible, traffic may move over to let you in, but don't force your way into the traffic stream. Traffic could be traveling at high speed, so try to match your speed to filter in without affecting the traffic flow. Question 6. Which vehicle is most likely to take an unusual course at a roundabout? Give one answer. A. Delivery van. B. Estate car. C. Long vehicle. D. Milk float. The correct answer is C. Long vehicle. Explanation. Long vehicles might have to take a slightly different position when approaching the roundabout or going around it. This is to stop the rear of the vehicle cutting in and mounting the curb. Question 7. What does this sign mean? Give one answer. A. No entry. B. No parking. C. No road markings. D. No through road. The correct answer is A. No entry. Explanation. No entry signs are used in places such as one-way streets to prevent vehicles driving against the traffic. To ignore one would be dangerous, both for yourself and for other road users, as well as being against the law. Question 8. What does this sign mean? Give one answer. A. Parking for buses only. B. Parking for trams only. C. Route for buses only. D. Route for trams only. The correct answer is D. Route for trams only. Explanation. Avoid blocking tram routes. Trams are fixed on their route and can't maneuver around other vehicles or pedestrians. Modern trams travel quickly and are quiet, so you might not hear them approaching. Question 9. What does this sign mean? Give one answer. A. Clearway, no stopping. B. National speed limit applies. C. Waiting permitted. D. Waiting restrictions apply. The correct answer is D. Waiting restrictions apply. Explanation. There'll be a plate or additional sign to tell you when the restrictions apply. Question 10. What's the meaning of this traffic sign? Give one answer. A. Bus lane ahead. B. End of two-way road. C. Give priority to vehicles coming towards you. D. You have priority over vehicles coming towards you. The correct answer is D. You have priority over vehicles coming towards you. Explanation. Don't force your way through. Show courtesy and consideration to other road users. Although you have priority, make sure oncoming traffic is going to give way before you continue. Question 11. What does this sign mean? Give one answer. A. Beware of trains. B. Beware of trams. C. Level crossing. D. Tourist attraction. The correct answer is D. Tourist attraction. Explanation. These signs indicate places of interest and are designed to guide you by the easiest route. 
They're particularly useful when you're unfamiliar with the area. Question 12. What does this sign mean? Give one answer. A. Give way. B. No through road. C. T junction. D. Turn left ahead. The correct answer is C, T junction. Explanation, this type of sign warns you of hazards ahead. Make sure you look at each sign and road marking that you pass, so that you don't miss any vital instructions or information. This sign shows there's a T-junction with priority over vehicles from the right. Question 13. What does this sign mean? Give one answer. A. Adverse camber. B. Steep hill downwards. C. Steep hill upwards. D. Uneven road. The correct answer is B. Steep hill downwards. Explanation. This sign gives you an early warning that the road ahead will slope downhill. Prepare to alter your speed and gear. Looking at the sign from left to right will show you whether the road slopes uphill or downhill. Question 14. You're in the left-hand lane at traffic lights, waiting to turn left. Which signal means you must wait? Give one answer. A. B. C. D. The correct answer is A. Explanation, at some junctions, there may be separate signals for different lanes. These are called filter lights. They're designed to help traffic flow at major junctions. Make sure that you're in the correct lane and proceed if the way is clear and the green light shows for your lane. Question 15. Where would you see this road marking? Give one answer. A. At a box junction. B. At traffic lights. C. Near a level crossing. D. On road humps. The correct answer is D. On road humps. Explanation, because the road has a dark color, changes in level aren't easily seen. White triangles painted on the road surface give you an indication of where there are road humps. Question 16. What does this sign mean? Give one answer. A. End of bus lane. B. End of motorway. C. No motor vehicles. D. No through road. The correct answer is B, end of motorway. Explanation, when you leave the motorway, make sure that you check your speedometer. You may be going faster than you realize. Slow down and look for speed limit signs. Question 17. Which type of crossing allows cyclists to ride across while pedestrians are also crossing? Give one answer. A. Pelican. B. Puffin. C. Toucan. D. Zebra. The correct answer is C. Toucan. Explanation, a toucan crossing is designed to allow pedestrians and cyclists to cross at the same time. Look out for cyclists approaching the crossing at speed. Question 18. What's a cover note? Give one answer. A. A document issued before you receive your MOT certificate. B. A document issued before you receive your driving license. C. A document issued before you receive your insurance certificate. D. A document issued before you receive your registration document. The correct answer is C. A document issued before you receive your insurance certificate. Explanation. Sometimes an insurance company will issue a temporary insurance certificate called a cover note. It gives you the same insurance cover as your certificate but lasts for a limited period, usually one month. Question 19. You're turning right at a crossroads. An oncoming driver is also turning right. What's the advantage of turning behind the oncoming vehicle? Give one answer. A. You'll be able to turn without stopping. 
B. You'll have a clearer view of any approaching traffic. C. You'll have more time to turn. D. You'll use less fuel because you can stay in a higher gear. The correct answer is B. You'll have a clearer view of any approaching traffic. Explanation When turning right at a crossroads where oncoming traffic is also turning right, it's generally safer to turn behind the approaching vehicle. This allows you a clear view of approaching traffic and is called turning offside to offside. However, some junctions, usually controlled by traffic light filters, are marked for vehicles to turn near side to near side. Question 20. What should the driver of the red car arrow do? Give one answer. A. Quickly drive behind the pedestrian in the road. B. Tell the pedestrian in the road she shouldn't have crossed. C. Wait for the pedestrian in the road to cross. D. Wave towards the pedestrians who are waiting to cross. The correct answer is C. Wait for the pedestrian in the road to cross. Explanation. Some people might take a long time to cross the road. They may be older or have a disability. Be patient and don't hurry them by showing your impatience. If pedestrians are standing at the side of the road, don't signal or wave them to cross. Other road users might not have seen your signal and this could lead the pedestrians into a hazardous situation. Question 21. What's the purpose of the yellow lines painted across the road? Give one answer. A. To keep the area clear of traffic. B. To make you aware of your speed. C. To show a safe distance between vehicles. D. To warn you to change direction. The correct answer is B. To make you aware of your speed. Explanation. These lines may be painted on the road on the approach to a roundabout, a village or a particular hazard. The lines are raised and painted yellow, and their purpose is to make you aware of your speed. Reduce your speed in good time so that you avoid having to brake harshly over the last few meters before reaching the junction. Question 22. What's the main hazard the driver of the red car, arrowed, should be aware of? Give one answer. A. Glare from the sun may affect the driver's vision. B. Oncoming vehicles will assume the driver is turning right. C. The black car may stop suddenly. D. The bus may move out into the road. The correct answer is D. The bus may move out into the road. Explanation, if you can do so safely, give way to buses signaling to move off at bus stops. Try to anticipate the actions of other road users around you. The driver of the red car should be prepared for the bus pulling out. As you approach a bus stop, look to see how many passengers are waiting to board. If the last one has just got on, the bus is likely to move off. Question 23. You're in a built-up area at night and the road is well lit. Why should you use dipped headlights? Give one answer. A. So that you can be easily seen by others. B. So that you can go at a much faster speed. C. So that you can see further along the road. D. So that you can switch to main beam quickly. The correct answer is A. So that you can be easily seen by others. Explanation. You may be difficult to see when you're traveling at night, even on a well-lit road. If you use dipped headlights rather than side lights, other road users should be able to see you more easily. Question 24. Why should you reduce your speed when you're driving or riding in fog? Give one answer. A. It's more difficult to see what's ahead. B. The brakes don't work as well. C. The engine will take longer to warm up. D. You'll be dazzled by other headlights. The correct answer is A. It's more difficult to see what's ahead. Explanation. 
you won't be able to see as far ahead in fog as you can on a clear day. You'll need to reduce your speed so that, if a hazard looms out of the fog, you have the time and space to take avoiding action. Traveling in fog is hazardous. If you can, try to delay your journey until it has cleared. Question 25. Why should you use your mirrors when you see a hazard ahead? Give one answer. A. Because you'll need to accelerate out of danger. B. Because you'll need to brake sharply and stop. C. To assess how your actions will affect the traffic behind. D. To check what's happening on the road ahead. The correct answer is C. To assess how your actions will affect the traffic behind. Explanation. You should be constantly scanning the road for clues about what's going to happen next. Check your mirrors regularly, particularly as soon as you spot a hazard. What's happening behind may affect how you respond to hazards ahead. Question 26. What helps to reduce traffic bunching on a motorway? Give one answer. A. Contraflow systems. B. Lane closures. C. National speed limits. D. Variable speed limits. The correct answer is D. Variable speed limits. Explanation. Congestion can be reduced by keeping traffic at a constant speed. At busy times, maximum speed limits are displayed on overhead gant rise. These can be varied quickly, depending on the amount of traffic. By keeping to a constant speed on busy sections of motorway, overall journey times are normally improved. Question 27. Which sign shows that a tanker is carrying dangerous goods? Give one answer. A. B. C. D. The correct answer is B. Explanation. Tankers will display a hazard warning plate on the side and rear of the vehicle. Details of hazard warning symbols are given in the highway code. If a tanker is involved in a collision, you may need to report the tanker's hazard labeling to the emergency services. Question 28. At night, what does it mean, if you see a pedestrian wearing reflective clothing and carrying a bright red light, give one answer. A. You're approaching a slow-moving vehicle. B. You're approaching a traffic danger spot. C. You're approaching an organized walk. D. You're approaching roadworks. The correct answer is C. You're approaching an organized walk. Explanation. The people on the walk should be keeping to the left, but don't assume this. Pass carefully, making sure you have time to do so safely. Be aware that the pedestrians have their backs to you and may not know that you're there. Question 29. What does it mean if the signs at a bus lane show no times of operation? Give one answer. A. The lane is in operation 24 hours a day. B. The lane is only in operation at peak times. C. The lane is only in operation in daylight hours. D. The lane isn't in operation. The correct answer is A. The lane is in operation 24 hours a day. Explanation. Bus lane signs show the vehicles allowed to use the lane and its times of operation. Where no times are shown, the bus lane is in operation 24 hours a day. Question 30. You're invited to a pub lunch. What should you do if you know that you'll have to drive in the evening? Give one answer. A. Avoid mixing your alcoholic drinks. B. Don't drink any alcohol at all. C. Eat a hot meal with your alcoholic drinks. D. Have some milk before drinking alcohol. The correct answer is B. Don't drink any alcohol at all. Explanation. Alcohol will stay in your body for several hours and may make you unfit to drive later in the day. 
Drinking during the day will also affect your performance at work or study. Question 31. You're driving in a slow-moving queue of traffic. What should you do just before changing lane? Give one answer. A. Change down to first gear. B. Give a slowing down arm signal. C. Look for motorcyclists filtering through the traffic. D. Sound a horn and flash your lights. The correct answer is C. Look for motorcyclists filtering through the traffic. Explanation. In queuing traffic, motorcyclists could be passing you on either side. Use your mirrors and check your blind area before changing lanes or changing direction. Question 32. You're waiting at a T-junction. What should you do if a vehicle is coming from the right, with its left indicator flashing, give one answer. A. Move out and accelerate hard. B. Move out slowly. C. Pull out before the vehicle reaches the junction. D. Wait until the vehicle starts to turn in. The correct answer is D. Wait until the vehicle starts to turn in. Explanation. Other road users may give misleading signals. When you're waiting at a junction, don't emerge until you're sure of their intentions. Question 33. What should you do if your vehicle has a puncture on a motorway? Give one answer. A. Drive slowly to the next service area to get assistance. B. Pull up on the hard shoulder or in an emergency refuge area and call for assistance. C. Pull up on the hard shoulder or in an emergency refuge area. Change the wheel as quickly as possible. D. Switch on your hazard warning lights. Stop in your lane. The correct answer is B. Pull up on the hard shoulder or in an emergency refuge area and call for assistance. Explanation. Pull up on the hard shoulder or in an emergency refuge area and call for assistance. Don't attempt to repair your vehicle while it's on the hard shoulder, because of the risk posed by traffic passing at high speeds. Question 34. You're driving along a country road. You see this sign. What should you do after dealing safely with the hazard? Give one answer. A. Accelerate briskly. B. Check your tire pressures. C. Switch on your hazard warning lights. D. Test your brakes. The correct answer is D. Test your brakes. Explanation. If your brakes have been thoroughly soaked, you should check that they're working properly before you build up speed again. Before you do this, remember to check your mirrors and consider what's behind you. Question 35. When would you increase the pressure in your tires, so that it's above the normal value, give one answer. A. When carrying a heavy load. B. When the roads are slippery. C. When the tire tread is worn below 2 mm. D. When the vehicle is fitted with anti-lock brakes. The correct answer is A, when carrying a heavy load. Explanation, check the vehicle handbook. This should give you guidance on the correct tire pressures for your vehicle and when you may need to adjust them. If you're carrying a heavy load, you may need to adjust the headlights as well. Most cars have a switch on the dashboard to do this. Question 36. What will happen if your car's wheels are unbalanced? Give one answer. A. The brakes will fail. B. The steering will pull to one side. C. The steering will vibrate. D. The tires will deflate. The correct answer is C. The steering will vibrate. Explanation, if your wheels are out of balance, it will cause the steering to vibrate at certain speeds. This isn't a fault that will put itself right, so take your vehicle to a garage or tire fitter to have the wheels rebalanced. Question 37. 
how can you use your vehicle's engine to control your speed, give one answer. A. By changing to a higher gear. B. By changing to a lower gear. C. By selecting neutral. D. By selecting reverse gear. The correct answer is B, by changing to a lower gear. Explanation, you should brake and slow down before selecting a lower gear. The gear can then be used to keep the speed low and help you control the vehicle. This is particularly helpful on long downhill stretches, where brake fade can occur if the brakes overheat. Question 38. What should you do when leaving your vehicle parked and unattended? Give one answer. A. Leave the left indicator on. B. Lock it and remove the key. C. Park in a housing estate. D. Park near a busy junction. The correct answer is B. Lock it and remove the key. Explanation. An unlocked car is an open invitation to thieves. Leaving the keys in the ignition not only makes your car easy to steal but could also invalidate your insurance. Question 39. You're driving on a motorway at night. Which lights should you have on if there are other vehicles just ahead of you? Give one answer. A. Dipped headlights. B. Front fog lights. C. Main beam headlights. D. Side lights only. The correct answer is A. Dipped headlights. Explanation. If you're driving behind other traffic on the motorway at night, use dipped headlights. Main beam headlights will dazzle the other drivers. Your headlights dipped beam should fall short of the vehicle in front. Question 40. You're driving on the motorway. Which lane should you get into well before you reach your exit? Give one answer. A. The hard shoulder. B. The left hand lane. C. The middle lane. D. The right hand lane. The correct answer is B. The left hand lane. Explanation. You'll see the first advance direction sign one mile from a motorway exit. If you're traveling at 60 miles per hour in the right hand lane, you'll only have about 50 seconds before you reach the countdown markers. There'll be another sign at the half mile point. Don't cut across lanes of traffic at the last moment, move to the left hand lane in good time. Question 41. What must you do, if your eyesight has become very poor, and you're no longer able to meet the driver's eyesight requirements, give one answer. A. Tell the driver licensing authority. B. Tell the police. C. Tell your doctor. D. Tell your optician. The correct answer is A. Tell the driver licensing authority. Explanation. Having very poor eyesight will have a serious effect on your ability to drive safely. If you can't meet the driver's eyesight requirements, you must tell DVLA, or DVA in Northern Ireland. Question 42. Why should drivers be more careful on roads where trams also operate? Give one answer. A. Because trams can't steer to avoid obstructions. B. Because trams can't stop for cars. C. Because trams don't have a horn. D. Because trams don't have lights. The correct answer is A. Because trams can't steer to avoid obstructions. Explanation. You should take extra care when you first encounter trams. You'll have to get used to dealing with a different traffic system. Be aware that trams can accelerate and travel very quickly, and they can't change direction to avoid obstructions. Question 43. What should you do when you leave your car unattended for a few minutes? Give one answer. A. Leave the engine running. B. Lock it and remove the key. C. Park near a traffic warden. D. 
switch the engine off but leave the key in. The correct answer is B, lock it and remove the key. Explanation, always switch off the engine, remove the key and lock your car, even if you're only leaving it for a few minutes. Question 44. What should you do to reduce the risk of your vehicle catching fire? Give one answer. A. Avoid driving with a full tank of fuel. B. Check out any strong smell of fuel. C. Keep water levels above maximum. D. Use fuel additives. The correct answer is B. Check out any strong smell of fuel. Explanation. The fuel in your vehicle can be a dangerous fire hazard. If you smell fuel, check out where it's coming from. Never use a naked flame near the vehicle if you can smell fuel smoke when refueling your vehicle. Question 45. You're driving a car that has a diesel engine. What can a loose filler cap on your fuel tank cause? Give one answer. A. It can improve your vehicle's fuel consumption. B. It can increase the level of exhaust emissions. C. It can make the engine difficult to start. D. It can make the road slippery for other road users. The correct answer is D. It can make the road slippery for other road users. Explanation. Diesel fuel can spill out if your filler cap isn't secured properly. This is most likely to occur on bends, junctions, and roundabouts, where it will make the road slippery, especially if it's wet. At the end of a spell of dry weather, road surfaces may be especially slippery where diesel has been spilled but it hasn't been washed away by rain. Question 46. You're driving past parked cars. What should you do if you see a bicycle wheel sticking out between the cars? Give one answer. A. Accelerate past quickly and sound your horn. B. Brake sharply and flash your headlights. C. Slow down and be prepared to stop for a cyclist. D. Slow down and wave the cyclist across. The correct answer is C. Slow down and be prepared to stop for a cyclist. Explanation. Scan the road as you drive. Try to anticipate hazards by being aware of the places where they're likely to occur. You'll then be able to react in good time. Question 47. What would you expect to find at a contraflow system on a motorway? Give one answer. A. Lower speed limits. B. Road humps. C. Temporary traffic lights. D. Wider lanes than normal. The correct answer is A. Lower speed limits. Explanation. When approaching a contraflow system, reduce speed in good time and obey all speed limits. You may be traveling in a narrower lane than normal, with no permanent barrier between you and the oncoming traffic. Be aware that the hard shoulder may be used for traffic and the road ahead could be obstructed by slow moving or broken down vehicles. Question 48. Are passengers allowed to ride in a caravan that's being towed? Give one answer. A. No, not at any time. B. Only if a stabilizer is fitted. C. Only if all the seats in the towing vehicle are full. D. Yes, if they're over 14. The correct answer is A. No, not at any time. Explanation. Riding in a towed caravan is highly dangerous. The safety of the entire unit is dependent on the stability of the trailer. Moving passengers would make the caravan unstable and could cause loss of control. Question 49. Which driving technique can help you save fuel? Give one answer. A. Accelerating sharply in each gear. B. Missing out some gears. C. Using each gear in turn. D. Using lower gears as often as possible. The correct answer is B. Missing out some gears. 
Explanation, missing out intermediate gears, when appropriate, helps to reduce the amount of time spent accelerating and decelerating, the times when your vehicle uses the most fuel. Question 50. You're leaving your vehicle parked on a road and unattended. When may you leave the engine running, give one answer. A. If the battery keeps going flat. B. If you'll be parking for less than 5 minutes. C. Never if you're away from the vehicle. D. When parked in a 20 miles per hour zone. The correct answer is C. Never if you're away from the vehicle. Explanation. When you leave your vehicle parked on a road, switch off the engine and secure the vehicle. Make sure no valuables are visible, shut all the windows, lock the vehicle, and set the alarm if the vehicle has one. Question 1. What should you do before making a U-turn? Give one answer. A. Check road markings to see that U-turns are permitted. B. Give an arm signal as well as using your indicators. C. Look over your shoulder for a final check. D. Select a higher gear than normal. The correct answer is C. Look over your shoulder for a final check. Explanation. If you have to make a U-turn, slow down and ensure that the road is clear in both directions. Make sure that the road is wide enough for you to carry out the maneuver safely. Use your mirrors and look round to check it's safe before turning across the road. Question 2. Why is it dangerous to drive too close to the vehicle ahead? Give one answer. A. Your engine will overheat. B. Your mirrors will need adjusting. C. Your sat-nav will be confused. D. Your view of the road ahead will be restricted. The correct answer is D. Your view of the road ahead will be restricted. Explanation. Tailgating is the term used when a driver or rider follows the vehicle in front too closely. It's dangerous because it restricts your view of the road ahead and leaves no safety margin if the vehicle in front needs to slow down or stop suddenly. Tailgating is often the underlying cause of rear-end collisions or multiple pileups. Question 3. What should you do if you're being followed by an ambulance showing flashing blue lights? Give one answer. A. Accelerate hard to get away from it. B. Brake harshly and stop well out into the road. C. Maintain your speed and course. D. Pull over as soon as it's safe to do so. The correct answer is D. Pull over as soon as it's safe to do so. Explanation. Pull over in a place where the ambulance can pass safely. Check that there are no bollards or obstructions in the road that will prevent it from passing. Question 4. What type of emergency vehicle is fitted with a green flashing beacon? Give one answer. A. Ambulance. B. Doctor's car. C. Fire engine. D. Road gritter. The correct answer is B. Doctor's car. Explanation. A green flashing beacon on a vehicle means the driver or passenger is a doctor on an emergency call. Give way to them if it's safe to do so. Be aware that the vehicle may be traveling quickly or may stop in a hurry. Question 5. What makes the vehicle in the picture environmentally friendly? Give one answer. A. It's powered by diesel. B. It's powered by electricity. C. It's powered by gravity. D. It's powered by unleaded petrol. The correct answer is B. It's powered by electricity. Explanation. Trams are powered by electricity and therefore don't emit exhaust fumes. They ease traffic congestion by offering drivers an alternative to using their car, particularly in busy cities and towns. Question 6. 
what should the driver of the car approaching the crossing do, give one answer. A. Continue at the same speed. B. Drive through quickly. C. Slow down and get ready to stop. D. Sound the horn. The correct answer is C. Slow down and get ready to stop. Explanation. Look well ahead to see whether any hazards are developing. This will give you more time to deal with them in the correct way. The man in the picture is clearly intending to cross the road. You should be traveling at a speed that allows you to check your mirror, slow down and stop in good time. You shouldn't have to brake harshly. Question 7. Why do motorcyclists often look round over their right shoulder just before turning right, give one answer. A. It helps them balance as they turn. B. Motorcycles don't have mirrors. C. To check for traffic in their blind area. D. To listen for traffic behind them. The correct answer is C. To check for traffic in their blind area. Explanation. When you see a motorcyclist take a glance over their shoulder, they're probably about to change direction. Recognizing a clue like this helps you to anticipate their next action. This can improve road safety for you and others. Question 8. You're about to overtake a slow-moving motorcyclist. Which sign would make you take special care, give one answer. A. B. C. D. The correct answer is A. Explanation, in windy weather, watch out for motorcyclists and also cyclists, as they can be blown sideways into your path. When you pass them, leave plenty of room and check their position in your mirror before pulling back in. Question 9. You're approaching a mini roundabout. What should you do if a long vehicle in front signals left but positions over to the right, give one answer. A. Follow the same course as the lorry. B. Keep well back. C. Overtake on the left. D. Sound your horn. The correct answer is B. Keep well back. Explanation. At many roundabouts, there isn't much room for a long vehicle to maneuver. It will have to swing out wide so that it can complete the turn safely. Keep well back and don't try to move up alongside it. Question 10. You're driving on a single carriageway road. Why should you keep well back while you're following a large vehicle, give one answer. A. To get the best view of the road ahead. B. To give yourself acceleration space if you decide to overtake. C. To leave a gap in case the vehicle stops and rolls back. D. To offer other drivers a safe gap if they want to overtake you. The correct answer is A, to get the best view of the road ahead. Explanation, when following a large vehicle, keep well back. If you're too close, you won't be able to see the road ahead, and the driver of the long vehicle might not be able to see you in their mirrors. Question 11. Which road users benefit from toucan crossings, give one answer. A. Bus and lorry drivers. B. Car drivers and motorcyclists. C. Cyclists and pedestrians. D. Tram and train drivers. The correct answer is C. Cyclists and pedestrians. Explanation. Toucan crossings are similar to pelican crossings but there's no flashing amber phase. Cyclists share the crossing with pedestrians and are allowed to cycle across when the green cycle symbol is shown. Question 12. What does this sign mean? Give one answer. A. Cycle in single file. B. Cycle route ahead. C. Cycles aren't allowed. D. Cyclists must dismount. The correct answer is B. Cycle route ahead. Explanation. 
where there's a cycle route ahead, a sign will show a bicycle in a red warning triangle. Watch out for children on bicycles and cyclists rejoining the main road. Question 13. Which sign means there's a double bend ahead? Give one answer. A. B. C. D. The correct answer is B. Explanation. Triangular signs give you a warning of hazards ahead. They are there to give you time to prepare for the hazard, for example, by adjusting your speed. Question 14. What does this sign mean? Give one answer. A. Entrance to tunnel. B. Hump bridge. C. Humps in the road. D. Soft verges. The correct answer is C, humps in the road. Explanation, these humps have been put in place to slow the traffic down. They're usually found in residential areas. Slow down to an appropriate speed. Question 15. Which sign means the end of a dual carriageway? Give one answer. A. B. C. D. The correct answer is D. Explanation, if you're overtaking, make sure you move back safely into the left-hand lane before you reach the end of the dual carriageway. Question 16. What does this sign mean? Give one answer. A. No through road. B. T junction. C. Telephone box ahead. D. Toilet ahead. The correct answer is A. No through road. Explanation, you won't be able to find a through route to another road. Use this road only for access. Question 17. Which is the sign for a ring road? Give one answer. A. B. C. D. The correct answer is C. Explanation, ring roads are designed to relieve congestion in towns and city centers. Question 18. Why does this junction have a stop sign and a stop line on the road? Give one answer. A. It's a busy junction. B. Speed on the major road is dear strict. C. The junction is on a downhill gradient. D. Visibility along the major road is restricted. The correct answer is D. Visibility along the major road is restricted. Explanation, where emerging traffic has a very restricted view of the main road, you may find a stop sign and a solid white stop line. You must stop at the line and then check carefully before you emerge. Question 19. You're approaching a junction where the traffic lights aren't working. What should you do when a police officer gives the signal? Give one answer. A. Continue ahead only. B. Stop at the stop line. C. Turn left only. D. Turn right only. The correct answer is B. Stop at the stop line. Explanation. When a police officer or traffic warden is directing traffic, you must obey them. They'll use the arm signals shown in the highway code. Learn what these signals mean and obey them. Question 20. What does this arm signal mean? Give one answer. A. The driver intends to turn left. B. The driver intends to turn right. C. The driver is slowing down. D. The driver wishes to overtake. The correct answer is A. The driver intends to turn left. Explanation, there might be an occasion where another driver uses an arm signal. This may be because the vehicle's indicators are obscured by other traffic. In order for such signals to be effective, all drivers should know their meaning. Be aware that the left turn signal might look similar to the slowing down signal. Question 21. Which sign means that the national speed limit applies? Give one answer. A. B. C. D. 
the correct answer is D. Explanation, you should know the speed limit for the road on which you're traveling and the vehicle that you're driving. The different speed limits are shown in the highway code. Question 22. What should you do when going through a contraflow system on a motorway? Give one answer. A. Keep a good distance from the vehicle ahead. B. Stay close to the vehicle ahead to reduce cues. C. Switch lanes to keep the traffic flowing. D. Use dipped headlights. The correct answer is A. Keep a good distance from the vehicle ahead. Explanation. At road works, and especially where a contraflow system is operating, a speed restriction is likely to be in place. Keep to the lower speed limit and don't switch lanes to get too close to the vehicle in front of you, be aware that there will be no permanent barrier between you and the oncoming traffic. Question 23. What should you do before slowing down or stopping your vehicle? Give one answer. A. Flash the headlights. B. Select a higher gear. C. Sound the horn. D. Use the mirrors. The correct answer is D. Use the mirrors. Explanation. Before slowing down or stopping, check the mirrors to see what's happening behind you. Also assess what's ahead and make sure you give the correct signal if it will help other road users. Question 24. What's the reason for the hatched area along the center of this road? Give one answer. A. It marks an area to be used by overtaking motorcyclists. B. It separates the two sides of the dual carriageway. C. It separates traffic flowing in opposite directions. D. It's a temporary marking to warn of the roadworks. The correct answer is C. It separates traffic flowing in opposite directions. Explanation. Areas of hatched markings such as these separate traffic streams that could be a danger to each other, they're often seen on bends or where the road becomes narrow. If the area is bordered by a solid white line, you mustn't enter it except in an emergency. Question 25. The conditions are good and dry. When should you use the two-second rule? Give one answer. A. Before restarting the engine after it has stalled. B. Before using the mirrors, signal, maneuver routine. C. When checking your gap from the vehicle in front. D. When traffic lights change to green. The correct answer is C. When checking your gap from the vehicle in front. Explanation, in good conditions, the two-second rule can be used to check the distance between your vehicle and the one in front. This technique works on roads carrying faster traffic. Choose a fixed object, such as a bridge, sign, or tree. When the vehicle ahead passes this object, say to yourself, only a fool breaks the two-second rule. If you reach the object before you finish saying this, you're too close. Question 26. You're driving on a three-lane motorway. How should you overtake a slow-moving lorry in the middle lane if it's showing this sign? Give one answer. A. Approach with care and overtake on the left of the lorry. B. Cautiously approach the lorry, then overtake on either side. C. Follow the lorry until you can leave the motorway. D. Use the right-hand lane and overtake the lorry normally. The correct answer is A. Approach with care and overtake on the left of the lorry. Explanation. This sign is found on slow-moving or stationary works vehicles. If you wish to overtake it, do so on the left, as indicated. Be aware that there might be workmen in the area. Question 27. A driver's behavior has upset you. How can you get over this incident safely? Give one answer. A. Follow them, flashing your headlights. B. Gesture to them with your hand. C. 
shout abusive language. D. Stop and take a break. The correct answer is D. Stop and take a break. Explanation. If you feel yourself becoming tense or upset, stop in a safe place and take a break. Tiredness can make things worse and may cause a different reaction to upsetting situations. Question 28. What should you do if you want to overtake a long slow moving vehicle on a busy road? Give one answer. A. Flash your headlights for the oncoming traffic to give way. B. Follow it closely and keep moving out to see the road ahead. C. Keep well back so that you get a good view of the road ahead. D. Stay behind until the driver waves you past. The correct answer is C. Keep well back so that you get a good view of the road ahead. Explanation. When you're following a long vehicle, stay well back so that you can get a better view of the road ahead. The closer you get, the less you'll be able to see of the road. Be patient and don't take a gamble. Only overtake when you're certain that you can complete the maneuver safely. Question 29. What must you do when you see this sign? Give one answer. A. Stop even if the road is clear. B. Stop only if a red light is showing. C. Stop only if children are waiting to cross. D. Stop only if traffic is approaching. The correct answer is A. Stop even if the road is clear. Explanation. Stop signs are situated at junctions where visibility is restricted or where there's heavy traffic. They must be obeyed. You must stop. Look carefully before moving off. Question 30. You've stopped at a railway level crossing. What should you do if the red lights continue to flash after a train has gone by? Give one answer. A. Alert drivers behind you. B. Phone the signal operator. C. Proceed with caution. D. Wait. The correct answer is D. Wait. Explanation. You must always obey red flashing stop lights. If a train passes but the lights continue to flash, another train will be passing soon. Cross only when the lights go off and the barriers open. Question 31. You're at an incident. What could you do to help an unconscious casualty? Give one answer. A. Check that they're breathing normally. B. Move them to somewhere more comfortable. C. Splash their face with cool water. D. Take photographs of the scene. The correct answer is A. Check that they're breathing normally. Explanation. If a casualty is unconscious, you need to check that they're breathing normally. Look for chest movements, look and listen for breathing, and feel for breath on your cheek. Question 32. You arrive at an incident. There's no danger from fire or further collisions and the emergency services have been called. What's your first priority when attending to an unconscious motorcyclist? Give one answer. A. Check whether they have any broken bones. B. Check whether they have any bruising. C. Check whether they're bleeding. D. Check whether they're breathing normally. The correct answer is D. Check whether they're breathing normally. Explanation. At the scene of an incident, always be aware of danger from further collisions or fire. The first priority when dealing with an unconscious person is to ensure they can breathe. This may involve clearing their airway if you can see an obstruction or if they're having difficulty breathing. Question 33. You're behind this cyclist. When the traffic lights change, what should you do? Give one answer. A. Allow the cyclist time and room. B. Tap your horn and drive through first. C. Try to move off before the cyclist. D. Turn right but give the cyclist room. 
the correct answer is A, allow the cyclist time and room. Explanation, hold back and allow the cyclist to move off. Some junctions have special areas marked across the front of the traffic lane. These allow cyclists to wait for the lights to change and move off ahead of other traffic. Question 34. Why should you reduce your speed here? Give one answer. A. A low bridge is ahead. B. A stagger junction is ahead. C. The road narrows ahead. D. The road surface changes ahead. The correct answer is B. A stagger junction is ahead. Explanation. Traffic could be turning off or pulling out ahead of you, to the left or right. Vehicles turning left will be slowing down before the junction, and any vehicles turning right may have to stop to allow oncoming traffic to clear. Be prepared for this, as you might have to slow down or stop behind them. Question 35. What must you do if your ability to drive is impaired during a period of illness? Give one answer. A. See your doctor each time before you drive. B. Stop driving until you're fit to drive again. C. Take all your medicines with you when you drive. D. Take smaller doses of any medicines. The correct answer is B. Stop driving until you're fit to drive again. Explanation, only drive if you're fit to do so. Driving when you're ill or taking some medicines can affect your concentration and judgment. It may also cause you to become drowsy or even fall asleep. Question 36. Which road users are most difficult to see when you're reversing your car? Give one answer. A. Car drivers. B. Children. C. Cyclists. D. Motorcyclists. The correct answer is B. Children. Explanation, it may not be possible to see a small child through the rear windscreen of your vehicle. Be aware of this before you reverse. If there are children about, get out and check that it's clear before reversing. Question 37. You want to turn right from a junction. What should you do if your view is restricted by parked vehicles? Give one answer. A. Move out quickly but be prepared to stop. B. Sound your horn and pull out if there's no reply. C. Stop, get out and look along the main road to check. D. Stop, then move forward slowly until you have a clear view. The correct answer is D. Stop, then move forward slowly until you have a clear view. Explanation. If you want to turn right from a junction and your view is restricted, stop. Ease forward until you can see, something might be approaching. If you don't know, don't go. Question 38. A single carriageway road has this sign. What's the maximum permitted speed for a car towing a trailer? Give one answer. A. 30 miles per hour. B. 40 miles per hour. C. 50 miles per hour. D. 60 miles per hour. The correct answer is C. 50 miles per hour. Explanation. When you're towing a trailer, a reduced speed limit also applies on dual carriageways and motorways. These lower speed limits apply to vehicles pulling all sorts of trailers, including caravans and horse boxes. Question 39. You're driving with your front fog light switched on. What should you do if the fog has cleared? Give one answer. A. Drive with them on instead of your headlights. B. Flash them to warn oncoming traffic that it's foggy. C. Leave them on if other drivers have their lights on. D. Switch them off as long as visibility remains good. The correct answer is D. Switch them off as long as visibility remains good. Explanation. Switch off your fog lights if the weather improves, 
but be prepared to use them again if visibility reduces to less than 100 meters, 328 feet. Question 40. You're driving along a wet road. How can you tell if your vehicle's tires are losing their grip on the surface? Give one answer. A. The engine noise will increase. B. The engine will stall. C. The steering will feel very heavy. D. The steering will feel very light. The correct answer is D. The steering will feel very light. Explanation. If you drive at speed in very wet conditions, your steering may suddenly feel lighter than usual. This means that the tires have lifted off the surface of the road and are floating on the surface of the water. This is known as aquaplaning. Reduce speed but don't brake until your steering returns to normal. Question 41. You're driving on this dual carriageway. Why may you need to slow down? Give one answer. A. There are no footpaths. B. There are roadworks ahead of you. C. There are solid white lines on either side. D. There's a broken white line in the center. The correct answer is B. There are roadworks ahead of you. Explanation. Look well ahead and read any road signs as you drive. They're there to inform you of what's ahead. In this case, you may need to slow down and change direction. Check your mirrors so you know what's happening around you before you change speed or direction. Question 42. Which lights must you use if you're driving on a well-lit motorway at night? Give one answer. A. Use front fog lights. B. Use only your side lights. C. Use rear fog lights. D. Use your headlights. The correct answer is D. Use your headlights. Explanation. If you're driving on a motorway at night or in poor visibility, you must always use your headlights, even if the road is well lit. Other road users must be able to see you, but you should avoid causing dazzle. Question 43. You're driving at night with your headlights on main beam. A vehicle is overtaking you. When should you dip your headlights? Give one answer. A. As soon as the vehicle passes you. B. Before the vehicle starts to pass you. C. Only if the other driver dips their headlights. D. Sometime after the vehicle has passed you. The correct answer is A, as soon as the vehicle passes you. Explanation, on main beam, your lights could dazzle the driver in front. Dip your headlights as soon as the driver passes you and drop back so that the dipped beam falls short of the vehicle in front. Question 44. When may you drive a car in this bus lane, give one answer. A. Outside its hours of operation. B. To get to the front of a traffic queue. C. To overtake slow-moving traffic. D. You may not use it at any time. The correct answer is A. Outside its hours of operation. Explanation. Some bus lanes operate only during peak hours and other vehicles may use them outside these hours. Make sure you check the sign for the hours of operation before driving in a bus lane. Question 45. What's likely to happen if you use a hands-free phone while you're driving? Give one answer. A. It will divert your attention. B. It will improve your safety. C. It will increase your concentration. D. It will reduce your view. The correct answer is A. It will divert your attention. Explanation. Talking to someone while you're driving can distract you and unlike when someone is in the car with you, the person on the other end of a mobile phone is unable to see the traffic situations you're dealing with. They won't stop speaking to you even if you're approaching a hazardous situation. You need to concentrate on your driving at all times. 
Question 46. How can you reduce the chances of your car being broken into when leaving it unattended? Give one answer. A. Park near a fire station. B. Park near a taxi rank. C. Place any valuables on the floor. D. Take all valuables with you. The correct answer is D. Take all valuables with you. Explanation, when leaving your car, take all valuables with you if you can. Otherwise, lock them out of sight. Question 47. Your vehicle breaks down on a motorway and you manage to stop on the hard shoulder. What should you do if you use your mobile phone to call for help? Give one answer. A. Check your location from the nearest marker posts beside the hard shoulder. B. Phone a friend and ask them to come and collect you. C. Stand at the rear of the vehicle while making the call. D. Wait in the car for the emergency services to arrive. The correct answer is A. Check your location from the nearest marker posts beside the hard shoulder. Explanation. You should use an emergency telephone when you break down on the motorway. Only use your mobile if this isn't possible. The emergency services need to know your exact location so they can reach you as quickly as possible. Look for a number on the nearest marker post beside the hard shoulder. Give this number when you call the emergency services. Question 48. You're parked in a busy high street. What's the safest way to turn your vehicle around so you can drive in the opposite direction? Give one answer. A. Ask someone to stop the traffic. B. Carry out a U-turn. C. Drive into a side road and reverse out into the main road. D. Turn around in a quiet side road. The correct answer is D. Turn around in a quiet side road. Explanation. Make sure you carry out the maneuver without causing a hazard to other vehicles. Choose a place to turn that's safe and considers other road users. Question 49. How can you make sure that a satellite navigation, sat-nav, system doesn't distract you when you're driving? Give one answer. A. Choose a voice that you find calming. B. Only set the destination when you're lost. C. Set it before starting your journey. D. Turn it off while you're driving in built-up areas. The correct answer is C. Set it before starting your journey. Explanation. Sat-navs can be useful when driving on unfamiliar routes. However, they can also distract you and cause you to lose control if you look at or adjust them while you're driving. Set the sat-nav before starting your journey, or pull up in a safe place before making any changes to it. Question 50. What's the legal minimum tread depth for tires on your trailer or caravan? Give one answer. A. 1 mm. B. 1.6 mm. C. 2 mm. D. 2.6 mm. The correct answer is B, 1.6 mm. Explanation, trailers and caravans may be left in storage over the winter months, and tires can deteriorate. It's important to check their tread depth and also their pressures and general condition. The legal tread depth of 1.6 mm applies to the central three quarters of a tire spread, over its entire circumference. Please don't forget to like share, comment and subscribe to support this channel. Thank you for watching and good luck for your test.